Hello viewers, today it's going to be a video about RVS treatment on my engine and power steering system. The products I'm going to be using RVS Nano Ceramic Engine Protection and Restoration Compound and RVS Nano Ceramic Power Steering Protection and Restoration Compound. In this video, I'm going to be using the RVS G6 and P2. I also have the RVS G8 here and you might be asking what's the difference between the G6 and the G8? Well, pause the video. Now, I'm going to get this off my chest rather sooner than later. From what you see in the following and having had my own hands on the products, I will go out and say that G8 seems to be like a complete scam. You're essentially paying an extra 50% over the G6 and get nothing more. I checked RVS's homepage and it says nothing about the chemical difference between these two products. The homepage and packaging only states that one is for oil capacity from 4 to 6 liters and the other is 6 to 9. The only visible difference on the packaging was that G6 said nano ceramic and G8 stated tribo ceramic on the front label. All of the rest of the labeling is completely the same. What came out of the packages you can see for yourself. The packages are conveniently stickered shut. Ok, benefit of the doubt. Maybe these two are from completely different batches. Given the pricing of the product, the relative unknown status of the brand and my local peculiarities, there is a chance that either one of these has stood on the shelf for years before I bought it. The online store where I ordered the G8 states that they have three left and no possibility to order any more. The product and the chemical components may have changed in between the production of these different batches. At the moment of making this video I still have all the contents of the G8 package and on none of the items the date of production has been specified. Anyone watching is free to conduct further research into it and come to their own conclusions. Thank you. As it says on the packaging, G6 is for engines with oil capacity from 4 to 6 liters and G8 is from 6 to 9 liters. I bought these from a different website. This was 89.90 and these were this was about 57 euros and this was something around 20 euros on this website i registered my account for the first time and i got like 10 percent off i cheaped out on uh, getting the smaller one because the website just didn't have the larger rvs product if you know anything about rvs engine treatment then you have to run it at least twice i'm going to be running this pre-oil change and this one after the oil change the engine on which I'm going to be using the treatment is of, of a 2008 Audi A8 3.2 FSI V6. I took the liberty of opening up the package behind the camera here. So what do we get? An RVS box. Restoration fluid. Oddly enough, they're a bit different. And volumetrically, the G6 bottle feels larger than the G8 bottle. Also, with the G6 you get this gel and with the G8 you get this gel. And as you can see, one is 10 milliliters, the other is 11. I bet it's just the same gel, and there's one milliliter of more gel for the GA treatment. Also, in the box was a sticker in both boxes and a manual. I'll go through the manual on camera. First treatment step by step. Warm up the engine up to its normal operating temperature. The contents of the package should be at room temperature. Squeeze the contents of the small tube into the bowl and close the gap of the bowl. Check the bowl well 20 to 30 seconds until the mixture is homogeneous. Pour immediately half of the mixture into the engine. Let the engine idle for 15 minutes. Stop the engine for one minute. Check the bowl well. Pour rest of the mixture in the bowl into the engine. Drive the vehicle at least for 30 minutes, avoiding heavy engine loading. When treating a motorcycle engine with United Lubrication with the gearbox, use all the gears for equal intervals during this stage. Drive the vehicle in the sequel as usual for approximately 300 to 400 kilometers, but avoid heavy engine loading. So I've taken the liberty of opening up both the tube and the bottle behind the camera, and I'll do my best to mix these on camera. <music> I did my very best to get the every last milliliter of gel into the bottle behind the camera and now all I'm gonna do is shake it as if it's intended in the instructions. Having done my very best to shake it up, I'm gonna let it sit for a few seconds and I'm gonna open up the power steering kit. In the power steering kit you get a, a syringe with a tube, the gel itself, and obviously instructions. I'm gonna read the instructions on camera. Treatment step by step. Set the hose on the syringe end. 
Squeeze the contents of the small tube into the syringe. Set the piston in the syringe, turn the syringe with the hose end upwards and squeeze the air out of the syringe. Remove the upper oil cap of the power steering and take approximately 20 milliliters of oil from the device with the syringe. Take air into the syringe until the piston edge is at the 60 milliliter marking. Shake the syringe until the mixture inside is homogeneous. Squeeze the contents of the syringe into the power steering. Set the oil cap back and tighten it. Start the engine and let it idle for approximately 5 to 10 minutes. Drive the vehicle immediately for at least 10 minutes on as winding road as possible or alternatively on a car parking on a car parking. Okay. At low speed by turning the steering wheel from one extreme position to the other. I did the self-explanatory part of attaching the tube and squeezing the gel into the syringe body. Now you need to attach the piston and squeeze out all the air. Seems that we can't get all of the air out, but it's gonna be fine. Next step is to take 20 ml of power steering oil and pull it into the syringe from the power steering reservoir. Here's my power steering reservoir. It's all oily from the catastrophe that got me doing this RVS treatment in the first place. So I'm just gonna wipe it clean here a little nice and full now I had a leaky power steering line so here's the live update we started the car it made a terrible noise look under the car that's definitely oil that's under there this is more or less 20 mil of power steering fluid a bit more and 10 mil of the gel but I need to mix it anyway so it makes no difference whatsoever so I'm gonna elaborate the next few steps so all I need to do is Pull some air into the syringe to mix up the fluids and then dump it in the power steering reservoir. So I'm gonna do the mixing and I'll film the dumping. I fare pretty well in mixing both of the mixtures. As a precaution, I'll make sure that the car is completely on operating temperature. I let the engine idle back to the full operating temperature and now I'm gonna add half of both of the mixtures. It's hardly a rocket science, but I'm gonna do my best to add half of both of the mixtures. I think I managed to fare pretty well for myself, causing only a small ecological catastrophe here. I could do pretty well in putting the mixture in. Now having added both of the mixtures into the engine and the power steering reservoir, I'm gonna let the car idle for 15 minutes before adding the second half of the mixtures. It's 17.56, I'm gonna add the mixtures at 18.11 after 15 minutes of idling. The engine and the power steering pump have had their idle. Everything is still running at the moment making no extra noises so that seems to be good i'll add rest of the mixtures into the corresponding tanks having cleaned myself and the car from all the excess residue it's time to close the bonnet and to go for the 30 minute shakedown it's 1823 the car has done 196,105 kilometers so remember these stats and I'll go and drive I got in about 19 kilometer test drive a little bit more than half an hour has passed and the car is running fine as you saw from the drive footage i tried to give it a bit of lock to lock so that the car would get the mixture in both power steering and engine everywhere everything is running fine for the moment i'll see you over time what will this treatment do or won't do if you're still with me thanks for watching and i'll see you in another one